Jesus told his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, sort of the prime directive, the Great Commission, as we call it. And yet that has continued to be so, and the church has struggled through the years and even more so in modern times with what does it mean to make disciples? What are disciples? And I want to talk a little bit about maybe getting back to the earliest forms of that to see what it really means. It's interesting that, as we've already seen in the beginning of Acts, that Jesus told them that this whole venture of the church would have to be spirit-empowered and spirit-led. They were not to leave and begin until they knew they were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to go and be his witnesses. And yet we've turned it a lot of times in churches because of our natural propensity as humans to organize. We've turned it into a classroom thing. You know, you go to church and it's discipleship one, discipleship two, and discipleship three. And I guess you're a disciple when you're done. And that hasn't worked so well for us. Even though we do need some systematic learning, that is not all there is to discipleship. In the early church, in chapter two, we read that the early church was devoted to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and prayer. And then it says they went house to house. They went to the temple daily. Daily they went to the temple. Daily they went house to house. And they shared food. They prayed. They encouraged one another, shared fellowship. And in this way, the church grew and the people grew. So they were devoted to the apostles' teaching for sure, but it was more important to have the whole thing together. It wasn't something you just did once in a while for an hour on Sundays. It was your whole life. I believe that that's something that the Lord's trying to help us get back to, the early church. And look what Jesus did with his own, with the apostles. They're the ones who went out and started everything. What did they do? Jesus had them to be with him. Again, based on relationship. It's relationship with the Lord and relationship with each other. And so that's, I know, one of the things we're trying to do is get back to relationship building and believing as we do that, we lead people along the walk we're taking. The apostles from being with Jesus what, they, what happened to them? Same thing the early church did. Went to the temple all the time. He spoke in temples. He also devoted himself to teaching, and they learned from him. They watched him heal the sick, cast out demons. They saw how he corrected people, how he taught, how he encouraged. They saw him weep over Jerusalem. They learned to have the heart of God. And Jesus told them in later times what would happen. He says, don't worry. When I'm gone, the Holy Spirit will remind you of what I've taught you and guide you into all truth. Now, he can't remind us of something we don't know, so we do have to help people learn to read and learn the Bible, learn doctrine and all that. But we have to believe that it's the work of the Holy Spirit that we trust and we go forth daily in relationship and say, Lord, you bring the right people. You put me in the right circumstances. And he wants to do that. So we have to allow that again. And so I'm thinking that's the main thing I want to really get at here is it's relationship and it's mentoring and it's bringing people in life with us. It can be messy. You know, we, we like Bonhoeffer's um, cost of discipleship, but read Life Together gives you a more, an impression more of this living together. Or Art Katz, True Fellowship. These are books that really help us to see what it means to try to put this into practice. And I know that God will help us as we continue to go his direction. So in our church, we have at Bethlehem Community Fellowship, um, my associate pastors are um, Joshua and Raquel Rivera. So I have Raquel here, and she's going to share just an example of how that has developed in our church and, and, and in a way that has really made a difference and helped us to see the fruit of this kind of thinking. I recently heard an interview with Christine Kane, and in the interview she would, was asked, what is the church meant to do in the season of COVID-19, and how is the church meant to function in it? Uh, Christine looked at the woman who was interviewing her and in her incredible Australian accent, which I will not imitate for you today, said, what do you mean? Nothing has changed for the church. The mission has remained the same. And as Pastor Jim was saying, this is so true for us. In light of any chaos, disaster, or disorder, the mission remains the same for us, and that is to make disciples of Jesus. As Pastor Jim was sharing in Matthew 28, 16 to 20, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I love that. The one who has all authority in heaven and on earth is with us always. And in every season, every circumstance, we as leaders can be confident that Jesus will lead us well as we lead others. 
And right now here at BCF, we're in the midst of many transitions. And one of the transitions includes a Thursday night women's group that I've been uh, leading for the past almost four years. And in that time, the Lord made it clear to me that I was supposed to start a Bible study from home. And he told me that the goal of the Bible study was for these women to be discipled, empowered, and equipped through the word of God and then sent out to start their own studies. Over the past four years, God did just that. And through the power of his living word, he equipped and he empowered many women. And from that group, two of the young women were sent out to their own Thursday night group to start one in their community, and others were led in similar discipleship opportunities. In the fall, one of the women from our group will be taking over as a leader of the Thursday night Bible study. And personally, I have been called into leading a new group in a different way, but with the same mission of discipleship, equipping, and empowerment. And isn't that the model that we are meant to follow? That is what we saw our great teacher do. We saw him disciple, empower, equip, and send. You can see Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 12 for more on that. So my encouragement to all of you in this season leading through the unknown would be to continue in what we have been called to do, make disciples. So look around you. What needs do you see? Who is in need of discipleship? What empowering and equipping needs to happen? <clears throat> Gather that group of people and start there. Using his word as a guide, watch what Jesus will do as you make space and time for him to work. So I think the thing I'm um, most aware of is that as, we, as we're concluding this, is I guess my encouragement would be not to think of what kind of program could we start that would do more of this, but to help us be more natural, more relaxed, and just say, how can I encourage people as a leader? How can I encourage others to, to just engage more with people, be more vulnerable, be more real, be a part of life, and just be there to live life together and learn what it means to follow Jesus. Every church is different. Every person is different. We all have different ways of communicating, different ways of relating to people. There's not a right or a wrong way, but when there's, it, there is a, well, there is a wrong way. <laughs> when we remove ourselves personally from the process and make it very antiseptic, that is just knowledge. Um, there, there are a lot of smart people out there who know the Bible better than some of us do, and they're not followers of Jesus necessarily, and they're not helping others. The goal should always be, what am I doing to further the kingdom? What is God wanting to equip me to do? So this, I think, will also help our churches if we want to see people active. When they start to realize you have a place, there are people for you to disciple. We disciple disciple makers. We make disciple makers, not just disciples. We're all called to go and make disciples. And so with God empowering us, guiding us by his spirit, and we're devoted to the teaching, to correct doctrine, we're growing together, we're going to see the favor of people. God's going to send us people. And as he puts them in our lives, we need to walk alongside, embrace them, and say, why don't you walk with me while I walk with Jesus? And the Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us to make that all work together and help us to, as a church to grow together as disciples and disciple makers. <laughs>